Welcome to the third unit of Strategic Business Management. In this unit, we will be talking about planning system in business. In the earlier two units, we studied about strategic management and business policies. In this particular unit, we will be covering various other planning processes which has been involved into the strategic management. The first thing which we will be studying in this unit is corporate planning, concepts of long-term planning, strategic planning, nature and process and importance of planning. So we will be going through various planning processes in which we will be working with corporate planning. We will be dealing with long-term planning and strategic planning as well. And we will be dividing these units into nature, process and their importance. So quickly follow towards the planning system. See, if we talk about planning system, we all know that planning can be defined as deciding in advance what you have to do in your future. So it is about planning the uncertainties of the future. For example, if you want to become a manager, you plan today which course you have to pursue in your graduation. In fact, you also plan your 12th, that you have to go through your 12th with the commerce since it contains various subjects for management. And then you finally pursue masters into management. You work for a job to get exposure of the business. And finally, with a good business plan, you end up as an entrepreneur or in a start a startup person. So this is what you have planned for your particular career. Same, a business also work for planning system. A business decides its objectives. They also decides what type of planning system they'll be having. What will be the benefit of that? What is the process of doing that particular planning? And in the end, the functionality parts of that. So planning is uh, working for the future. Now this planning system, or uh, it actually contains various elements to be studied. For example, you need to study the environment in which your business is working. You also have to study a level of competition which you will be facing in coming years. You have to also decide whether you will be into service industry or into a manufacturing one because both of them require different set of treatment and planning. And finally, the geographical area in which you will be working. And in the coming sections, you will come to know that what is the importance of studying this geographical area or environmental changes or competitors because it is one of the important part in designing strategies or planning system for your organization. But before working on to that, let us quickly move towards objectives of planning. What objectives do we keep in our mind before setting up a planning system or before planning particular activities? So it is basically the key component area why we plan or what should we keep in our mind before planning things. So first thing which we should keep in our mind is that a planning system should reduce your uncertainty. So you need to be certain or you need to be concrete for your future. Since future is uncertain, most of people predict cannot predict uh, their future. So future is uncertain. But there are certain sets of problems which you will be facing in your future. So you'll be pre you will be predicting these problems today and a set of solutions for these problems. So this can be objective of your planning system that you need to work on the future problems and devise strategy to cope up with this. The second important objective of your planning system should be to bring operation in your organization. So how do you bring this uh, cooperation in your system or into your organization. Before moving to that, first of all, we'll be working on to economic and operation. So economic and operation means you have to work on the economically well projects. See, resources are not abundant. You need to maximize the best possible utilization of these resources. So in order to do that, you have to plan in advance from where you'll get these resources, how will you work on your production part or the part which will be working on the delivery of the goods or services and that has to be designed in a way that it reduces wastage of the good. So it has to be an objective of your planning system. Third and one of the most vital thing is to achieve the predetermined goals. See every organization has certain sets of goals, be it a profit goal, be it servicing, be it anything, but every organization has a set of predetermined goals. You also have to decide what are the goals of your organizations are. And once you're done with that, your planning system has to be oriented based on your goals. So you have to set up certain activities which will be 
accomplishing your goals. So your planning system has an objective to achieve predetermined goals. Now, I was talking earlier about bringing cooperation and coordination among the organization. This is one of the HR part of an organization. So planning is actually important to this part because it is one of the vital resources of an organization. So planning can bring cooperation and coordination among various sections of the organization. The rivalries and conflict among departments could be avoided through planning. Besides this, planning avoids duplication of work, which is one of the major sources to create coordination and cooperation among the departments. Then we have to anticipate unpredictable contingencies. Now the question is, what is this contingency? Because we have earlier read uncertainty. They two are different. In uncertainty, you are not certain that what will be happening in future, but you are predicting it today. But in contingencies, you haven't predicted this today also. Contingencies are some unplanned problems which has now came to your business and now you have to give it solution. For example, COVID-19, which has struck India right now. Now, no business has planned for this particular disease or this particular virus. But then it is affecting their business as well today. So what are they planning? For example, if we refer Zomato, Zomato is uh, delivery services for food chains. So if Zomato has been struck by this particular problem, they have been giving assurance to their uh, customers that the food delivery process from their side is completely using untouched delivery of the parcel. You can refer to their app. You can find out information from Google as well. So they are dealing with the contingencies. Other companies are also working on to that parameter. So that should be objective of planning how to meet these contingencies on a day-to-day -day basis. And in the end, every organization wants to reduce its competition. Since competition cut down your profit, it cut down your customers. So that's why you need to give a planning set of system. How do you reduce this competition? So the existence of competitors actually enables enterprise to get fair chance of growth as well. So no competition is actually is a situation where you cannot imagine there will be no competition because no competition will also push you down towards the bad quality of your goods because you don't have anybody to compete. So you need competitors, but your sector should not be flooded with competitors as well. Because in that case, you will be having less market share to work on. So these can be objectives of planning. Now, once you have been finalized with the objective part, you need to know which type of planning which you will be involved into. So there are basically three types of planning, which we discussed in the first part also, that we'll be studying corporate planning, long-term planning, and strategic planning. In my coming videos, you will be finding out uh, sessions on strategic and long-term planning. But in this session, we'll be working on corporate planning. So what exactly is corporate planning? See, corporate planning is a top-level management planning. Uh, the board of directors or the founder members, they are involved into corporate planning. So it is called business of businesses, and it is a corporate house which decide how they'll be achieving their targets, how they'll be achieving their goals. They had to set up their business mission, vision, what is their objective of doing business, which we also studied earlier in the objectives of planning that a business had to decide where they want to go. So this goal setup process has to be divided by corporate planning. Rightly said by Peter Rugger, corporate planning is the continuous process of making risk-taking decisions. So he rightly said that it's a continuous process. That means that it would not end up with completing a task or completing an objective. Rather, it will create a next objective or next task for them. And it's a risk-taking decision because it's involved into a business. It does not guarantee everything to go flexible or smoothly into a business. So it's a risk process. You also get profit out of it. You can meet loss with it, but it's a part of a business. So it's a risk-taking decisions, which is systematic. So you are not taking decisions based on your intuitions. Rather, it is based on your decision-making ability. And you have studied the systematic process of this. What is that systematic process? We'll discuss in next slide. But it's a systematic process. And then you have to organize your effort carry out in making these decisions, and in the end, you'll measure the result of your decision-making ability or whatever your plan. So it's not like blank planning and you'll meet loss or profit. In between, you also measure how good is your planning is, what are the results you're getting in, in terms of profit or in terms of the goals which you have set earlier. So this is all about corporate planning. Let me quickly move towards the nature of corporate planning. See, corporate planning is one of the essential part of any organization. The top level decides what are the components of corporate planning, how it will work, how it will give benefit to organization. So let me quickly go through the nature of corporate planning. 
See, a corporate planning is a systematic thing. Peter Drucker already told us that it's a systematic process. So it involves uh, studying the long-term goals of company. It also studies uh, what are the ways through which you'll achieve these long-term goals. You study the internal as well as external factors which will be coming in between your uh, goals and your company organization. So it contains a complete set of system through which you design your planning system. It's a company-wide plan. That means that uh, corporate planning is not stagnant towards only one sector or two sector of a business. It does not cover only the finance or marketing part of a business. That it contains every aspect of your business. So be it NHR, be it finance, be it marketing, be it operation as well. It will cover your entire business. It's a top level activity. I have already told you that the founder members or board of directors decide this corporate planning. It's a continuous process. It never ends on to a particular achieving a particular objective. Rather, it moves on. It's a long term view. I mean, it does not end up into shorter term activities or problems, whether it works on to long term perspective of business. And since because of that, it is a forward looking process. It does not stick to a very short uh, timing of problems existing. It's a comprehensive set of things. See, just like it's, it's a comp company wide plan, it's a comprehensive plan as well. So it contains both strategic planning and operational planning. So both of the planning has to be linked with the corporate planning. So it's a comprehensive sort of thing. It does not only stops itself to only planning part. Rather, it uh, actually asks the lower level or middle level management to f make functional part of the planning as well. So this is the nature of corporate planning. How do companies plan things? Uh, how do they do corporate planning is, again, a very vital question. But before planning or before doing corporate planning, what are the objectives behind corporate planning? That's an important question to ask. So objectives of corporate planning, these are the following objectives. To allocate scarce resources, this is a fundamental objective of any planning. Because resources are not abundant, you have to use wisely. So it's, it's actually a part of a planning process that you need to allocate your resources, which are scarce to cope up with environmental changes. See, in every business or in every uh, subject which is teaching you how to do business, the first or second chapter will teach you about environment. You already would have studied about pastel analysis. You would have studied about demographic and other environment in changes. You would have heard about sort analysis, internal, external factors. All these factors are teaching you to work on environmental changes. Whatever thing you are seeing today, it's not permanent. It will change in future course of action. For example, if today you are using safety razor, Tomorrow you are using electric razor. That's a change in altogether the product dimension because of the environmental change, because of the technological change. If today you are using a simple Nokia phone, tomorrow you will be using an Android phone. And who knows, in coming time, you will be using a different set of phone operating system or a different phone like as a foldable phones we have. So environmental is bringing a huge round of changes in product and services being availed. Now we'll work on salt, coordinate sting strategies and organizational tasks. This is, again, a very important and vital objective of corporate planning. Coordinating strategic activities so as to reflect the firm's own internal strength and weaknesses in order to achieve efficient operation. So you are actually now working on the short of company. You are preparing the company for adaptation of integration, which are complementary to each other. Adaptation implies focus on where the firm is to go, whereas the integration focuses how to get there. So it does not only tell company what you have to achieve, but how you have to achieve will be the objective of your corporate planning. To make better plans, obviously we need some practical plans to achieve some practical goals. You cannot be impractical that you want to 5 billion economy. You need to work on small sets and then be optimistic about this. So this all are the objectives. Now we'll move towards the process, how to do corporate planning. Basically, to the process of corporate planning is very simple and it wraps itself into six action plans. The first action plan is scanning the environment. So you need to scan your uh, company's environment. Uh, and uh, before doing that, you need to scan the industry environment as well. So you need to study about social, cultural, political, legal, and technical environment which is available there. You also have to do short analysis of the industry. That is the strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat available of your industry. In the second, 
that is making corporate appraisal now here you will be doing the same scanning to your company now the internal factors will come into play external you don't have control over them you need to study them and you need to prepare your plan for them for internal you can actually modify things so that's why you need to study your corporate appraisal once you're done with this now you're ready to make mission and objectives so mission is a long term set of thing with small objective you can achieve your missions so once you're done with this now you can make strategies to achieve your mission and objectives so strategy formation is again a next part in which it involves appropriate strategy to attain the specified mission and objectives the next crucial part is developing action plan so earlier to developing action plan we are working on all the planning part now you have to make functional the part the functional part of this uh, particular planning system so what exactly come into developing action plan you have to identify jobs which have to be accomplished you have to determine sequence of job and activities you have to draw a schedule of operation and you have to lay down the procedure and method of works so basically you are actually working on the job part and the series of activities which have to be the part of this job and activity then the operational part of this activity and the procedure how to achieve these things once you're done with this you will come to the implementation part which will go to the middle level or lower level of the operation cycle so for implementation corporate strategy it should be translated into medium range functional and short range operation plan an effective implementation strategy requires designing of suitable structure of the organization effective management system and proper organizational culture to ensure employee motivation that actually talks about lot of hr points into this but obviously i already told you that corporate planning involves a comprehensive plan and it involves all the functions it does not work alone now quickly move towards why people do corporate planning what are the benefits of corporate planning or you can also say as importance of corporate planning it actually reduces uncertainty like other planning system does because you are planning for your future so you reduce uncertainty on the same parallel point once you're done with uncertainty part it also reduces ambiguity so corporate planning actually works on organization units such as accounting purchasing sales it works on to marketing part it works on to every business functional part and defines their role parallelly so it actually removes ambiguity it also removes duplication of work so now things are not ambiguous you can actually clarify what is the role being assigned to every system or section of the people we are working out so it removes ambiguity the another benefit is it works on the analysis of the environment in which your business is working so it is actually been giving you analysis of political economical social and technological things and it is also doing sort analysis so you know where opportunity lies of this particular company so it's a one of the best importance or best benefits of corporate planning are it will help you to allocate resources since it's an organized methodological way to achieve your business goal so it ensures rational allocation of resources and improves coordination between various units and divisions so that's the best benefit of having any planning system it helps you in measuring success of your planning system because i already told you that a uh, planning does not end up only into planning but we will be measuring the success of our plan process so corporate planning forces a company to set up well defined objectives and system to measure success goals are aligned with objectives in a clear time defined manner so a time section will actually define your success rate and resources are allocated according to that time limit a well defined corporate planning strategy ensures effective management of strategic objectives and establishes clear monitoring system that's what is been required in the last the one of the biggest benefit of corporate planning is it's an integrative process a major plus of corporate planning is that the organization is able to integrate and correlate all its strategic function several functional department which we have already discussed like as it marketing hr production finance they integrate these system and a corporate plan is designed by integration of all these system so these are the benefits so with these benefits there come certain limitations if you work on these limitations your corporate plan will be one of the best plan which will be given to a company so one thing i would like to clear here is don't understand limitations as disadvantages limitations are actually the shortfalls of any particular system if you work on to this limitation your planning can be better 
So limitations of corporate planning, which we'll be discussing here, is you have to gather a lot of competitive intelligence. You need people who are good into competitive intelligence. You have to understand what your competitors are doing and how they are likely to react to various strategies and tactics. So it is understanding your competitors. It is understanding competitor analysis at a very well level. You need good people to do that because without that, you cannot plan things. The second thing is you have to spot industry and economical trends as well. So corporate planner must always be aware of trends in industry and general economy as well. It will obviously impacting your profitability. It will also impact performance of the organization. If a company or country's economic trend is going down, you should not invest into that country or there can be some different areas also in which you have to study a well. Now the other thing is time pressure. I already told you it's a long term process. It does not serve your short time period activity. So time pressure is always there while working on to the corporate planning th things. Now, most of the people, they are not resistant to change because change is hard. So if they are not giving a change a task or change a place to occur in the organization, it will be very hard for corporate planning to work for it. Apart from change, it's a paid change also. Why? I'll tell you. See, if you take an example of IT industry, Today, IT industry is working on to most advanced languages, but earlier, two or three years back, or I'll tell you a year back, they were working on to diff other, another technologies, which are now outdated. So people who are working into this industry, they have to update themselves with proper training sets. This training is a paid one for organization. So it's a paid change for organization. They have to pay. So let their people work on to this. Now, it is an interface with other department. It's again a limitation for corporate planning to divide device a strategy in which uh, they design their system in a way that other department does not get too much involved or dependent on other department for their working. So it's a tricky and cheeky task to do that. Now, time to do planning. You also need a proper timing to plan out things, but market is particularly very volatile. If you take too much time in planning, things will change and you again have to change things according to that. And in the last, you are faced with unpredictable competition as well. There are certain competitors which you can study right now, but you cannot predict um, competitors in the future. See, a different industry product can altogether come to replace your product as well. See, earlier, Domino's and Pizza Hut were boasting about their delivery channels. Domino's was actually was boasting about 30 minutes of free, which was USP of Domino's. But now with uh, coming Zomato and other apps, uh, we are not talking about now about uh, this particular uh, called as Domino's. Rather, it is active for other apps as well. Now, Zomato is offering you an, a, a feature in which you can actually find out the time in which the product will be delivered to you, and they are actually asking money for that also. So, slowly, Zomato is becoming competitor for delivery channel. And the most evergreen example for un unpredictable competition will be the mobile phone industry. Who knew that camera industry will face mobile as a biggest competitor? Because every mobile phone now has a camera, and every day, every mobile phone is working on the betterment of that camera, be it Oppo, Vivo, Apple, or Samsung. They're working on their camera. So ca camera industry is hurted badly by this particular mobile industry. So you need to actually cope up with the competition, which is unpredictable. People will obviously... Uh, expect you more when you do corporate planning. So be ready for these limitations. If you work on to these limitations, your corporate planning will be best of the best. We'll end up this corporate planning session here. In the next session, we'll be discussing about long-term planning. But before that, I would like you to study corporate planning and strategy management. What is the difference between both of them, corporate planning, strategy management? And if you have any query or question, you can ask in the comment section. I'll be trying to give you answer in my next video. Thank you. Be safe. Study from your home.